you never fail your word you never fail your promises everything you say you bring them to pass lord we thank you none of your word has ever failed before covenant keeper our god of settlement we give you praise our god of settlement we say thank you our god of settlement we say thank you we say thank you blessed be your holy name thank you father in jesus name we pray today god we say to you today god we dry your tears today god we give you rest today that thing that gave men opportunity to mock you will be turned into testimony if you are saying amen say a better amen. amen the door you thought will never be open i speak with authority that door will be open for you today amen. if you are saying amen say a better amen. amen the powers behind your unsettlement they will give up on you today amen. they will give up on you today amen. they will give up on you today amen. they will give up on you today amen so shall it be in jesus name we pray god is settling my matter say god is settling my matter say it with conviction god is settling my matter you will get it today in jesus name we pray put those hands together for the lord and please be seated praise god what be bcc power of titan as a major driving force for our settlement and we're meant to understand that god has already settled us even before now forever O oh lord thy word is settled in heaven so god is not looking for what to use to settle me he has already settled me it is me now walking in line with his word that enable me to assess my own inheritance of settlement. What is settlement, by the way? Settlement is giving you your lot. Settlement is giving you your portion. Settlement is giving you what you are due for. Settlement is bringing you out of the waiting list. When you are settled, you are at rest. When you are settled, nothing troubles you. Settlement also means God bringing you to your next place of fulfillment. Your next place of accomplishment your next place of abundance your next place of blessing settlement settlement is you coming into a new order of laughter sarah said god has made me to laugh and all that here will laugh with me settlement so whatever has delayed you in destiny Today, God will say to you. Yeah. Settlement also means coming out of the detention camp of the wicked. Where the enemy locked you up. God brought you out. Settlement also means God establishing victory over the forces that are in contention against your destiny. I'm glad to let you know God cannot settle any matter in the favor of your adversary in case you are forgetting anything. God cannot settle any matter in the favor of any witch 
that I said, as far as I'm alive, you will not get this promotion. You will die. Write it down. You will die, the promotion will still take place. But God has his own ways of settlement. My ways are not your ways. Neither my thoughts your thoughts. As the heaven is far from the earth, so are my ways far from your ways. And my thoughts far from your thoughts. Naturally, when men need to be settled, they begin to lobby. They begin to press to see who to connect to. They look for connected men and connected women. Thank God for connected men and connected women. But hear me, there is a place where connection fails. But there is one connection that never fails. And that brings us to the relevance of this message, the power of your seed. The power of your seed. What you know determines what you do. If you don't know it, you can't do it. If you don't know it, you are limited. If you don't know it, you remain unsettled. They know not. Neither will they understand. You say all the foundation of the earth are out of course. Now, for things to be out of course means you remain unsettled. So ignorance can increase your rate of unsettlement. The reason why some people are not settled in life is not that the witch is strong, but that their minds are blind. They know not, neither will they understand. All the foundation of the earth are out of course. That's why the moment you discover light, it's like they just remove veil from your eye. What have I been doing since? Ignorance kept you. Ignorance can keep you from doing what will settle you. What you know determine what you do. And what you do determine where you will end. What you do will determine where you will end. What you do will determine the things that will change around you. You can't be doing the wrong thing and expecting the right results. It is not possible. I remember one young man that went to write jam. You know, they mix the question. They will put physics, government, literature, biology, mass. Are you wrong saying now? Out of excitement, are you wrong saying now? Out of excitement that uh, he knows the first, this thing. He was just, was shooting today. Do you know what he did? Immediately he finished the physics, he started answering the wrong question. He entered government. Let me show them. They don't show me too much, man. Show them some more. Before you know what's happening, he was doing the wrong thing. By the time he now discovered, you have 15 minutes more. So the other person now asked him, What did you answer in question 23? Chemistry. Which chemistry? government. <laughs> you can't be doing the wrong thing and expect the right result. <laughs> On the spot, he started crying to attract sympathy. He started crying to attract sympathy. So the woman was touched. The woman was touched. So the woman said, oh yeah, be writing, let me be going around and be picking other people's son. Let's see how far you can go. So she still left him there. He went to the other classroom. Can you see Mumu? <laughs> he, he felt he was trying to impress you. Hear me? Anytime you try to impress people, now you they suffer pass. Any 
time you try to impress people, now you they suffer pass. In fact, the more you try to impress people, the more you unsettle your own life. The energy that you will use in settling yourself is what you have been using to impress people. Hear me? Our settlement is tied to wisdom. Knowing the right thing to do and doing it. Knowing the right place to go and going there. And knowing the right thing to say and saying it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. I'm still coming. Just follow. Let's follow gradually. It shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to what? To observe and to what? To observe and to what? Which I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high, not on low, above all the nations of the earth. Look at verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. And thou, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, repeating it again as if God is a stammerer. And all these blessings. Our settlement is tied to blessings. But the blessings will not come until instructions are followed. Our settlement is tied to blessings. But the blessings are response to instructions. Blessings don't just happen. What you do determines what is triggered. What you do determines what is what triggered. So blessings are triggered by actions. And likewise, blessings are repelled by actions. So understanding is key for any kind of settlement anyone must enjoy. So doing a thing does not just bring results. It's understanding why and what is expected of you to do. Jesus talked about the parable of the sower. Some fell by the wayside. Some fell on good ground. Some fell among tongues. So it is one thing to hear. It's another thing for you to do what? Understand. So understanding varies from one person to another. He also talked about the parable of the mustard seed. In Matthew chapter 13. We will not read just chapter 13 from verse 31 to 32. Which is the least seed. Now hear me. No matter how small a seed is. It has the capacity to change your status. It has the power to end your trials. It has the power to dissolve the challenges. Seeds are powerful. And that is why understanding the mystery of seed sowing <laughs> brings you to a lifetime of continuous settlement. God never designed us to struggle to get things settled in our life. No. No wonder scripture says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Whenever a need arises in your life, God says, take seed. Take what? Please, let's read that scripture we read in the call to worship. Genesis 22. Let's look at them verse M. Verse 16 and 17. And said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, look at verse 17 now, that in blessing I will do what? And, multipl and in multiplying I will do what? Stop. I will do what? 
That was what caught my eye. Multiply thy seed, not multiply thy bread. He did this, I will multiply your harvest. I will multiply your seed. Once there is a consistent flow of seed, you will not lack harvest. Harvest is determined by seed. I will multiply thy seed. Now, to make us understand this, how do you feel coming to church and you don't have offering? Do you feel normal? Do you feel normal? I've told God, Lord, my offering must not reduce. My offering must not what? So by all means, the offering must come. My offering must not reduce, Lord. So the offering must come. When God multiply you with seed, <laughs> he, has <laughs> he has increased your settlement. Which means you will be settled any time you want. The seed is the carrier. Let's take it one by one. The seed is the secret for our rest. Because in every seed, there is what? Harvest. Now, there is no aspect of your life that you have been praying for now that a seed cannot settle. I say no aspect. No aspect. That a seed cannot settle. Your seed initiates your change of season. If you want God to move you from one level of increase to another level of increase, your seed can do it. He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The man God used to transform the nation of Ghana. He was mocked at. They laughed at him when he was on his way from Veranda Po. They said, what did you bring? You know, when you travel abroad, the first expectation is that, did you come with dollars? Or did you come with chocolate? Or did you come with uh, soap? Or perfume? You know, that's what they use in deceiving people. That they have traveled abroad. He said, well, what I brought is seed. They asked him, what is seed? He said, I brought cocoa seed. They said, all that they travel, they go bring better thing. Now, cocoa seed, you go bring. He brought what will last. He brought what will change the economy. So they started planting cocoa seed. They started planting cocoa seed. He didn't produce the first year. He didn't produce the second year. He didn't produce the third year. He didn't produce the fifth year. He didn't produce the sixth year. He didn't produce the seventh year. He didn't produce the eighth year. He didn't produce the ninth year. From the tenth year. <laughs> they began, cocoa began to boom. Cocoa began to boom. The seed began to multiply. They began to move from Accra to Kumasi to Tamile. They were moving and they were spreading. The economy transformed by somebody's seed. No wonder God said in Psalm 112, let's read it. Psalm 112, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his what? Commandment. The next verse. Are you afraid to call it? So what makes you mighty is what? What makes you mighty is what? So your dominion is determined by your seed. If you get seed, you get power. Your dominion is determined by what? The seed. The man that has seed is not troubled. But he knows how to cause trouble. 
Are you hearing me now? Now, if we go back to that same Genesis, that we read, Genesis 22, he said, Thy seed shall bruise. Genesis 22. We'll look at it from two angles. Genesis 22. And we also look at Genesis. Let's take a look at the first one. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and that shall bruise his heel. Now look at Genesis 22. Verse 17. Verse 17. That in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed. As the stars. Please don't remove this scripture. So your seed determines your shining. Your seed determines your announcement. As the stars, please put it back, of the heavens. And as the sands of the seashore. Now, let me use it in a way that you understand. How many of us know Bini where? You know Bini where or you have lived in Bini? You have lived in Bini. If you have lived in Bini, raise your hand. Now, do you know the Binedio family, they own almost 50% of the houses in Bini? The sands of the seashore. Which means they own almost half of the property. God said, I will bless you to the point that um, any, if they pass the streets, you own 70% of the houses. Amen. Amen. If they go to British America, you have bought all the houses there. Amen. Still go back to that scripture. Now look at. And thy seed shall do what? Your name is in trouble. So with your seed, you subdue the enemy. Before you possess somebody's gate, you don't win her. To possess somebody's gate means that uh, I've conquered you, so I take over your territory. So with your seed, you silence your enemy, possess their territory. Every settlement that God will bring to pass in your life, he will put a seed in your hand. Should I tell you something? Even people, when people are trying to wrestle your promotion, Jeremiah said, if you fight with men on foot and they weary you, he said, what will you do in the swelling of the Jordan? Now, when you are contending with men that are diabolic, that you don't, you don't understand where they are operating from, go by the realm of seed. I learned that one from Dr. Paul Lenenche. When you carry seed, you scatter gang up. You puncture the enemy. And you still take delivery of your blessing. He said, thy seed shall possess the gates, not gates. The gates! So every gate where blessings have been prepared for you, and they tell you that you will not enter, by your seed the barriers will be broken. No wonder Papa is a dangerous sower. Men that understand this mystery, they don't struggle to make progress. They don't beg for bread. They don't beg door to open. Your seed opens your door. Your seed opens your door. Seeds have power to open up destinies. That's exactly what God did in Abraham. By the power of seed. 
his destiny was unlocked. Now, like I said before, at 75, you can measure his strength. You can tell what he looks like. Am I correct? It's only in Plateau that people that, look, that are 75, they still they genge. Their body still they kakaraka. Am I saying the truth? At 75, Abraham should be on his way to permanent retirement. But that was his starting point. Why? God gave him seed. He understood the mystery of the seed. And his story was turned around. Should I tell you something? No witch, no evil man, even from your village, can lock you up. Nobody can lock you up. If you understand the power of seed, you will reach where God wants you to reach. You will meet the people God wants you to meet. You will achieve all God wants you to achieve. You limit yourself by putting your eyes on men. Because by your seed, you will assess your greatness. Your greatness is determined by your seed. He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He gives seed to the sower. He gives seed to the sower. I learned from Pastor Ibiomi. He said, any grace, any favor, any wisdom, any level of anointing you want, you can connect it by your seed. Yes. He told me something. He said, when Papa read the book by Gloria Copeland, God's will for you for his prosperity, he said, Papa saw Titan. But he saw prophet offering. And the Holy Ghost began to expand it to him that your seed connects you to any grace, connects you to any unction, connects you to any favor. And he said it has worked and it is still working. So if you are not settled now, do you know your problem? Stinginess. can prove me wrong. If you are not settled now, your stinginess is what kept you on the same spot. A stingy man is always thinking, if this one go, are you sure of the next one? If you allow this one go now, like, do you know what? <laughs> How will you manage? You have been suffering with it and nothing has changed. And the devil... Now, hear me. The devil will never, write it down and prove me wrong, will never encourage you to give. That's why any time there is a move to give, hmm, think well. Are you sure? Pastor, wisdom is profitable to direct you. He will now be reminding you scripture. Wisdom is profitable to direct are you wrong say now? You will not be cancelling you. That uh, you know your level. Though that beginning be small. Hear me? If you remain unsettled, it is your fault. It's not your enemy's fault. Your enemy is not the special advisor to Jehovah El Shaddai. Yes. When did your enemy because become God's counselor to determine when a blessing will enter your hand. If you remain unsettled, it's your fault. It's not God's fault. God said in his word, my counsel shall stand and I will do all, not some, of my good pleasure. Every good and perfect gift coming from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. God can't change his mind. If you remain unsettled, you are stingy. You are wicked against your destiny. 
You are wicked against your family. You are wicked against your future. There is he that scattereth. Let do what? Increase. But there is he that withholdeth more that is enough and tended to what? Poverty. Harsh one. You know poverty is in degrees. You meet what we call harsh poverty. So our seed can unlock our future. Your future is bright. Yeah. Hear me? You will go great places. Yeah. You will meet great people. Yeah. Start thinking it. Start thinking it. Start picturing it. And as you are thinking it, and as you are picturing it, start releasing your seed. No seed leaves your hand and remains a seed. He that goeth forth, bearing precious seed to sow, shall doubtless. Any seed that leaves your hand is not a waste. It's, it, it has gone on an errand that cannot fail. It has gone on a spiritual errand. Hear me? That promotion will come with celebration. Yeah. Any seed that leaves your hand cannot be swallowed by any witchcraft. You, you release a seed and they will say, that seed no go walk. That's it. You will die. Who received the seed? Who received the seed? So you can now see how God has used the mystery of seed to unlock our future and bring us to our different phases of change. It's changing us from one face to another face. From one face of blessing to another face of blessing. From one face of glory to another face of glory. So your seed is very important. He that goeth forth bearing precious seed. Is your seed precious? Bearing precious seed to sow. Now the next thing the seed can do for us the seed connects us to our multiplication and eliminates our limitations. <laughs> God has already said it, I will multiply your seed. Which means, I will never bring you to a point where you will lack what to sow. You will never lack what to sow. I will multiply the seed in your hand Thereby, I will eliminate limitation. When seeds are multiplying in your hand, your enemy is in trouble. Because barriers are crushed by seeds. Barriers are crushed by what? Seeds. So if you are tired of smallness, your seed can bring you enlargement. Let me say this. Maybe some people may miss to. Before I resumed here, I just came to look at the place. I just travel back. So my wife has said, we are going to sow a major seed to tear the heavens open. I packaged the seed of one million. I took it to God's servant. I said, my family must not beg bread. The heavens must stay open. I sowed for him sold for the wife, sold for the other senior man. He said, you mean you brought this seed to me? You mean you brought this seed to me? He said, knee down. From today, enter our realm. <laughs> Your hands will never go down. You know, spiritual blessings are recorded. From today, carry our kind of favor. I, I didn't go there to look for projects. I went to tear the heavens open. 
you provoke it by seed. Seed. Tell your neighbor seed. I'm preparing another heavy one again. Very soon. So your seed determines the kinds of things you see. Your seed determines the kind of things you see. It's the kind of, kind of opportunity that comes your way. If you are not meeting goodly opportunity, you are responsible. Your seed. If you must meet quality people, if you must meet a high scale favor, you must provoke it by your seed. David said, I will not give to the Lord that which will cost me what? Nothing. So when they bring offering to church, they are even angry that they are giving the offering. God is not looking for what to collect from us. He's not looking for what to collect from us. The cattle upon a thousand hill, they are mine. He said, if I were to be hungry, I will not ask you for food. If your offering has not changed, is it your seed that will change? Is it your seed that will change? So, your seed determines also the size of your breakthrough. Your seed determines the size of your what? Breakthrough. I won't forget... One day, I won't call his name, one of our senior men said, the offering a bube, you put in the hand of a bube to give God's servant, is what some senior men are bringing here to come and give daddy. It's just like um, you now, you are coming to church, you are coming to give God offering of 20 naira. I hope you know, it's a slap. So, the size of your seed determines the size of your breakthrough. Now, there is a kind of hammer you will use and hit this wall. Just one hit. What will happen? Well, what is breakdown? It will collapse. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? But there are other hammers you will need to hammer how many times? Do you understand what I'm saying now? That's the way our seed reacts. Now, another thing you need to understand, your seed gives you a voice. In the realm of the spirit, we are heard differently. Your seed do what? Gives you a voice. I say to one, go. And it goes. To another one, come. And it does what? As soon as they hear of me, they shall submit. So things respond to you by the quality. Don't forget we said that tight opens the heaven, but our seed provokes the earth for the release. The tight opens the heaven, but our seed provokes the earth to do what? Release. Also, our seed breaks hard grounds. No matter how hard a ground is, no matter how hard a place is, with a seed you break it. So your seed is your barrier breaker. No hard ground can resist your seed. Genesis 26. And there was famine in the land beside what? I want you to read <laughs> so that we can understand the true picture. 
there was famine in the land, which means they have not finished the first one. Another one came upon them. <laughs> this is what we call senior recession. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There was famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, which means they inherited a generational famine. Beside the, the famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gara. Now look at the next verse. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed. Hey! It's a principle that cannot be broken. And unto thy seed, I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. Your seed makes you a possessor of territories. Territories. And I will make thy seed to multiply. We met the same scripture. And I will make thy seeds to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all the countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Be blessed. Your seed. Look at the next verse. The next verse now. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, and my statute, and my laws. Verse 6 now. And Isaac dwelt in Gara. Verse 7. And the men of the place asked him of his wife. And he said, she is my sister. For he feared to say, she is my wife. Lis said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebecca because she was fair to look upon. Very attractive. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked out at the window and saw and behold Isaac was spotted with Rebekah his wife. The next verse and Abimelech called Isaac and said behold of a shorty she is thy wife and how said thou she is thy sister. And Isaac said unto him because I said least I die for her. The next verse and Abimelech said what is this thou hast done unto us? One of my one of the people might lightly have lived with thy wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. Verse 11, And Abimelech charged all these people, saying, He that toucheth this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. You see that your seed can kill too? Look at verse 12 now. Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. Look at the next verse now. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. So your seed is your driving force. Nothing can give you slow motion when your seed is in your hand. He that goeth forth bearing precious seed to sow. So your seed makes you to go forth and was strong and became great. Hear me? Your seed is not determined by size. It's not determined by quantity. It's determined by your heart. Somebody may be saying now, okay, maybe when I get 100,000, I'll start sowing. Shit. God is not looking for 100,000. He's looking for a heart. Tell your neighbor, a heart. That's why I say, my son, give me your heart, not your cash. My son, give me your what? My, give me your heart. It's not your cash that I'm talking of. Do you know your seed can be quality when it is 100 naira? Because God sees that that is your highest. That's why Jesus said, this widow has given more than all of you. Which means whatever we are giving, God is seeing it. He's watching it. He's seeing it. If you remain unsettled, you are responsible. 
your seed break hard ground. Isaac inherited the famine of his great grandfather, Abraham. I mean, his father, Abraham. That's a terrible inheritance. You know what it means to inherit recession? But still, by the mystery of seed, God made him great. Not only great, he became very great. Lastly, your seed breaks the hedge, the yoke of the wicked. So there is no yoke upon you now. Yoke of delay, yoke of limitation, yoke of barrenness, yoke of disappointment, yoke of rejection. Which kind of yoke you want to call? Any yoke at all, any yoke at all can be crushed by your seed. By your seed. Genesis 47 verse 15. It destroyed the it is it, it does even it, it even destroys the yoke of begging. You know some people they like begging. They like begging and they beg with dignity. They are very comfortable, they beg. You don't know that begging reduces. Begging reduces value. If people if the people that you are begging are they valued you before, they may give you the first day. But when you come the second time, come again, come again, you have lost what? And when money failed in the land of Egypt, you now see the power of seed. And in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, give us bread. But look at what happened. For why should we die in thy presence? For money what? Faileth. Go to flip to the next verse. And Joseph said, give your cattle and I will give you give for your cattle I will give you for your cattle if money fail. Now look at the next verse. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. And Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks and for the cattle of the hearts and for the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. Chop free. When that year was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my Lord. Now is now my Lord. How that our money is spent. My Lord also had our heart of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our lands. Look at the next verse now. Wherefore should we die before thy eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread. And we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh and give us seed. You know, he told them before that they will bow. They didn't agree. They were angry. <laughs> now they have bowed and bowed well. Your enemy will bow. Yeah. When I say your enemy will bow, don't joke. I say your enemy will bow. Amen. Now look at it. Give us seed that we may live and not what? Die. That the land may not be what? Desolate. So your seed determines your recovery. Do you want to recover? It's in your seed. Your seed determines your recovery. I will restore to you the years that the canker worm and the plumber worm have eaten. So even if you have lost 10 years, 15 years, your seed can recover it 50 years ahead. Your seed, <laughs> you, you have collected our cattle, collected everything. So what is now remaining is our body and our land. But this time around, give us seeds. If you have seed, <laughs> you will not only recover, you will take territories. 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 Lastly, your seed provoke divine visitation. Now you have given your seed, something must come from God. Your seed provoke divine visitation. 
Are you happy now? That matter is settled. Scripture says, surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Surely there is an end. There is an end to that problem. The end of that problem is defined. It's already defined now. You are already taking the victory. You are taking the breakthrough. Your seed determine your recovery. Shall I pursue? Will I overtake? He said, yes, pursue. You will overtake. And surely recover all. You will recover all. Rise up to your feet. Now we have talked about the seed. But don't forget, Jesus said in the parable of the sower, he said, The seed is the word. The seed is what? I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary will not be able to resist nor gainsay. The seed is the word. When you have the seed of the word, you will win any enemy. They can't triumph over you. You are going to pray from the depth of your heart. <laughs> By this anointing, whatever is behind my unsettlement in my career, in my business, in my destiny, Holy Ghost, you are the yoke destroyer. I command every yoke behind my own settlement to be broken. My destiny must be recovered. My business must be recovered. My career must be recovered. Lift up your voice and begin to pray right now. As this oil come upon you, the yoke destroyer himself destroy the yoke. The yoke of delay. The yoke of stagnation. The yoke of frustration. Any power behind your unsettlement by the anointing, the yoke is destroyed. Lift up your voice now. The yoke is destroyed. Pray from the depth of your heart. You are taking that blessing. You are taking that breakthrough. You are taking that blessing. You are taking that breakthrough. You will assess that open door. You will assess that promotion. You will take delivery of that change of story. Lift up your voice and pray. Mekaha duskepe breto jisu zekoka pekatosia inkake riedusa lishan gede no sutu emprede esodo lekote jekuka pekotalata jisu zekuke pre melo shia ketoza lakata rika keko preklekito jikluka preklekito zizosa jikuka kra keto zizose jelo sana meko teze Inkaka reto zizo siya. Jekuka preketolea. Emprata nato zezo. Jekuka pela teketo. Jekuka kreketese ziya. Inlekete zuzu epopo lakata. Jizo kaka rekote. Rekoteko prekete. Jizuze prekoteko ka. Liku ka preke. Inzuzu kaka prekete. Liko kapa letu ziaga. Lagora shago lakata. En rada da da le rutata jeklope bredi zozo lampobe le kotanga yaga lift up your voice and pray you are recovering you are recovering you are recovering the fire of God is eliminating that limitation lift up your voice and pray that promotion must enter your hand that breakthrough must enter your hand that open door must answer to you le raba zikotana Jesus yaba. Enkrapalia, Zeso Zeketa, Sheko Kaprakata, Lekaterita, Jizo, Lekata, Rekatalia, Emprado, Zezosia, Jelialata, Lakoteria, Mego, Liko, Jaga, Gaga, Gaga, Rekotete, Raga, Gaga, Gaga. Zino Balata, Jeklopere Dialeta, Enragaga, Lizo Dodo, La Pupa, Belapo, Jekuka, Peguta, Lesoze Keketeke, Resozaka Kalata, 
Preti, Nesudu, Ekopa, Lieta, Ezekuka, Reshiano, Enklapapre, Zekluteko, Jekutate, Rede, Zido, Radage, Zesosi Ababa, Jeklupapre, Enteteni, Jekokakra, Etopreti, Jekloteko, En Redi, Lesuzu, Enklapaliane, Enzatuteata, Jeklopepreata. Your story is changing. Your story is changing. Your story is changing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You can be in church and not be in Christ. Scripture say, if a man be in Christ, not if a man be in church. He is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. Coming to church is only a gateway to your salvation. Accepting Jesus is the confirmation. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, come out right now. I want to pray with you. Congratulations. If you pray that prayer with me, put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. You don't need to be ashamed. God has removed the things that is unsettling you. If you are coming, come quickly. Lift up your hand right now. Everybody lift up your hand. If you are coming out, come out. Oh. Please come. I want to pray for you. If you are coming out, come out. You don't need to be ashamed. You have disgraced the devil, so confirm the disgrace. By taking a bold step. I want to, I want to pray for you and I want to anoint you. Just come. Just come. Everybody lift up your hand. I pray for you as the prophet sent to this house in the name of Jesus whatever has vowed to keep you in pain in shame I cause the hole any power behind your unsettled states by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare them disarmed in the name of Jesus. I speak with prophetic grace and prophetic help. That blessing that is needed for your rest. Take it now in the name of Jesus. Any door that needs to be opened for your rest to be established. By prophetic fire. Be opened. Powers resisting your marital turn around. I decree right now. Be swallowed up. In the name of Jesus. Whatever is behind your tears. And whatever is planning to give you tears. I decree by prophetic vengeance and fire. Let the evil hand and the evil personality expire in the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, you will recover. Beginning from today, you will take territories. Beginning from today, your business course will be enlarged. Beginning from today, more quality opportunities will come your way. Beginning from today, help us that will initiate your change of story by the four winds of the spirit. Let them locate you. Your days of trials, they are over. Your days of shame, they are over. From today, fresh dew, fresh favor, fresh dew fresh favor rest upon you in the name of Jesus it is done 
this week you will hear news news that will confirm the blessing news that will settle your matter news of the open door if you are saying amen say better amen as i put this oil upon you the evil hand fighting you dry up the evil hand fighting you dry up in the name of jesus christ so shall it be god has opened somebody's womb god has opened somebody's womb the youthful cloth they use in tying you from getting married the fire of god has destroyed it if you are saying amen say better amen they vow that good will not come to that house i stand under the grace of this commission the floodgates of good open for you and your family it is written goodness and mercy shall follow me because you have stepped into this ground today i speak over you and your household goodness and mercy will flood to your house goodness and mercy will flood to your family if you are saying amen say better amen your days of begging they are over whatever gave men opportunity to mock you god is giving you uncommon testimonies so shall it be in jesus name we pray if you are saying amen say better amen, amen. everything is turning around Turning around for oh my good I can see everything I can see everything I can see everything no oh. Can you see everything Are you sure Are you sure recover from it. Please write it down. It's just nine minutes past twelve. The cause of favor that will bombard you this week, you will not recover from it. That's to let you know your settlement is complete. Because God is not a liar, you will stand on this altar to testify. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. Open your eyes, please. Turn. Follow that man. Follow that man. God. In Jesus' name we pray. Please take your seats for a minute. God bless you. It's reversed in your favor. The powers say no to you. They are silenced in the name of Jesus. The very person that worked against your promotion I command his heart overturn. It will be used for your promotion. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. 
That's somebody's own. No? I don't know who the person is, but the person will testify. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Your family have mocked you because you say you are a winner. Hear me? God will use your blessing to touch them one by one. If you are saying amen, say better amen. God will use your blessing to touch them one by one. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Nothing will be unsettled in your life again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sarah said, God has made me to laugh. And all that here will laugh with me. This week, God will give you forceful laughter. In Jesus' name we pray. Don't forget the wolf be formed after it. Go defended. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the goodness together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let the redeem of the Lord say so.